Hello, hello! Tammy with Cinematic Skeins, episode 3. Sorry, I'm trying to get comfortable on my day bed here. It has like a little bounce to it. It's kind of weird. Um, but anyway, yes, episode 3. Or 3. Um, remember in Glorious Bastards where he's like, I knew you were American because you said 3 instead of 3. Anyway. <laughs> hello, how are you? Um, I am kind of coming down off my vacation high. Like, I ended up not doing anything because uh, I know I was supposed to be in New York and it occurs to me now that if I'd have kept my New York trip I could have gone to Rhinebeck but I don't think I'm quite ready for Rhinebeck so maybe next year I'm gonna plan for it for next year uh, the issue I have with going to Rhinebeck would be with my introversion <laughs> crowds are a bit of a thing like the yarn crawl was okay because I took that yarn crawl bus and it was a small group of people and we kind of like introduced ourselves like before the bus came so I kind of knew people <laughs> um, so it was comfortable going places because I was like oh I have that person I know that person like but if I was going to like Rhinebeck like yeah I would see people that I seen on like you know blogs or things like that but I wouldn't know anybody and I feel like if I go to something like Rhinebeck, I need to know somebody or go with like a small group or another person or something in order to be comfortable and not overwhelmed, if that makes sense. Um, I had also considered going or driving down to Austin because they had their yarn crawl, which was the best little yarn crawl in Texas, I think it's called. Um, but again, crowds, don't know anybody. <laughs> I would have been uncomfortable. Plus, as we all know, I did not need any more yarn. Um, however, <laughs> I have bought some more yarn. I can't help myself. Um, I swear I'm on a yarn diet though. I'm, I'm gonna pull back a little bit because I've been going a little crazy lately and I'm just gonna like focus and work on some projects and get some stuff done because I'm, I'm doing too much right now and I need to like pull it back. Um, plus like with the fall, I tend to actually go outside a little bit more because I it's like my favorite season and I like to be outdoors when it's like chilly and I explore and go for drives and all that stuff so yeah maybe I won't like stop in a yarn shop while I'm doing that but we shall see um, <laughs> I do have a little bit more vacation time left um, I think I have it scheduled for November uh, so we'll see what happens I will try not to buy any more yarn though I'm, I'm not making any promises <laughs> Um, but anyway, I'm trying to keep this under an hour, or at least under 45 minutes. The goal is 30 minutes. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it because rambling, but I'm going to try. And I got a new camera, which will hopefully have a clearer picture and better sound. And we'll see how that goes. Um, that's also another reason I need to be on a yarn diet because my camera was not cheap. <laughs> so I forgot how expensive cameras were. But my camera was a uh, Canon G9 from like 2008, so it was definitely time to upgrade. Um, basically like the pixels or the megapixels or whatever they're called, I don't know anything about cameras, uh, on my camera was basically not as good as on my phone and I was like, I need to upgrade because I want my camera to be better than my phone camera because sometimes I actually do like going out and taking pictures with a real camera and not my phone. Um, I do miss film cameras. Like, even though I wasn't that great at cameras ever, film cameras were cool because you never knew if the film that you dropped off to be developed was actually gonna come back with anything or just black. I had a lot of instances where I just came back with black film because I overexposed it, but it was like fun because like, will I get pictures? Will I not get pictures? Will the pictures turn out? Like, I don't even know. And now it's like, I can see exactly what I'm filming or taking a picture of. And even then, sometimes it doesn't look like it looks to my eye. Like taking pictures of sunsets is like, oh, this is beautiful. And then like, look at my camera and I'm like, eh, you know. Anyway, I'm rambling. See, I'm doing it already. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Um, oh my God, I forgot my finished object. Hang on. Um, finished object. I made socks for the Spooky Socks Make Along, I believe it's called, um, hosted by Moonglow Yarn Company, 
Cave, Crazy Sock Lady, and Nitty Natty. <laughs> I think that's just three. I think it's just three. Um, but I made Beetlejuice socks. And I made these with Yarn I Dyed. Um, you guys, if you've seen me on Instagram, you've seen them already. But it's this is my Beetlejuice colorway. This is Never Trust the Living. <laughs> this is Gravel Tire by uh, West Seventh Wool, so I didn't dye this one. And uh, this is Sister to the Fates. Uh, it's got Stellina in it. Uh, but it was my yarn that I was dying for the movie Legend, and I never, I can't get darkness right because I'm having issues with red. Because red dye is just, mm, don't like it. And this is, uh, it's showtime. And so, yeah, I made stripey socks. And I absolutely love them. Um, and someone on my Instagram was like, oh my god, I love that yarn. Thank you. <laughs> I have more left if you want it. Because I don't really see myself, like, I'm not a big neon fan. I don't really see myself making a lot of this. Um, I've given some away um, to some ladies at On The Lamb Yarn Shop. And I think I might have one more skein of the Beetlejuice colorway left. Um, and I dyed the Beetlejuice colorway on 50 gram skeins. And then all the other ones are minis that I dyed. Um, and then... The Beetlejuice one is a four ply, and so is It's Showtime, because I dyed them to go together. And then the Never Trust the Living is actually a two ply, because I was dyeing it for a Halloween set I was trying to make, and then I realized it would go good with the Beetlejuice colorway, even though it's a different ply yarn, but yeah. Beetlejuice socks. I think that might be my only finished object. <laughs> so. Let's move on to works in progress. Um, I know I showed you guys the sock I was working on last time. So uh, this is with the Manus de Uruguay yarn and the Madeline Tosh um, cloak yarn. I'm not done yet. I just started the second sock last night and I'm not done because I decided to do the Beetlejuice socks. So that's still a work in progress. I'm actually working on these. I think this is going to be my knitting for today. And then we have my Glen, Glen Barrow sweater. Glen Barrow. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm sure it's Irish or something. Because I think the lady, I think Carol Feller's Irish. Because a lot of her, like her, uh, she's an accent, and then a lot of her uh, design names sound Irish. I don't know. Um, I thought I was making good progress on this sweater. Like I have to like give a little <laughs> background on it. Um, I feel like I've made good progress. I started on the sleeves on Thursday, Friday. What day is it? Being on vacation just messes me all up. Um, plus working from home, I never know what day it is. <laughs> I think it was Thursday. Um, and I started a sleeve and I got three quarters of the way down with the sleeve and then I tried it on and I realized my sleeves are massive. So I ripped it all back and started over again and I started doing like the decreases like every other round to try to shrink the sleeves a bit. Um, and then like once I get to a certain point I'll like lengthen out the decreases so it doesn't look all crazy but I don't know what I'm doing. We'll see what happens. But last time you guys saw it, it was to the stitch progress keeper there. I have gotten past that. I've done the, the border at the end. I've bound that off and like I said I've started on this or restarted this sleeve. So it's getting there. It's almost done. I swear it's almost done. Um, I got frustrated with the whole sleeve thing which is why I didn't work on it. I didn't do any knitting at all. Um, except starting that sock last night. So I didn't touch this yesterday because I was angry with it. <laughs> I also started another project. Uh, I know I mentioned that I was going to make the Bright Axis tee with West 7th Wool Soundbite and the Mad Stash yarn in Space Whales. And I have started it. Um, this will be my first bottom up sweater. 
Uh, so I'm a little, I don't, I don't know if this is, I feel like it's too small, but I might just, it's probably just bound up. Um, but I've started it, I just did the bottom ribbing, and now I'm just doing the body, which I feel like this is a giant sock, because it's mostly, sorry, it's all tangled up. It's like stockinette stitch, like all the way up until you get to like the underarm, which I feel like is going to be like my replacement for sock knitting during those conference calls I don't really care about. I keep saying it, don't I? Um, but yeah, you can see the... Oh my god, really. This is difficult. The speckles, which I think are really... They're not like too much. I was worried they would be too much, but I actually really like them. But I feel like this is too small. I don't know. I know it's bunched up and you know, we are in stretches when you block it and we'll see. Um, it's something to do and with it just being stock in it, I feel like I won't be so upset if I have to rip it back. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I don't know, like with bottom up, you can't really try it on like you can the top down. I guess I could like shimmy it up, but I don't know where it's supposed to lay. I don't know. I'm a little nervous about it. Um, so that's my other work in progress. And that is all my works in progress. And now let's move on to acquisitions. Um, superwash versus non superwash. I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> about non superwash. Like I know like that Kingston Company yarn I bought to make the owl sweater is non superwash. And I'm freaking out about it cuz I had ordered some non superwash yarn by mistake for dyeing and I completely felted it. Like it was just a mess and I I didn't think I changed the temperature or messed with it that much, but it felted like crazy. Um so I'm really nervous about it and I was told like, you know, you're knitting with it, you're not dyeing it, so it won't be that bad, but I'm still like freaking out about it a bit. Like, what if I make something I love and then I forget that it's non super wash and I wash it and ruin it and I don't have like kids around to give stuff to, you, so I'm nervous about it. However, I could not resist buying this yarn. It is a uh, Garnet Coven by Huck and Ray Fiber Studio hand-dyed yarn. They're on Etsy, but look at that color. It's so rich. I love it. I'm jealous. Um, but yeah, and that's their logo. This is 100% Peruvian Highland wool, 459 yards, four ply. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And I'm nervous about it. And then I went to West 7th Wool, and I bought more non superwash yarn. But I bought it by accident. Like, I bought it because they posted about it. Um, I saw it on my Facebook. Like, the link came up on Facebook. It's like, I need that bag. And the bag is only available if you buy this set. So I was like, I'm just going to buy it. Um, I'll use it. You know, I'll use the yarn. It's West Seventh Wool. I like their yarn. I didn't realize when I bought it that it was non superwash. But they have underwing mitt kits. And I also bought the pattern. And I first saw this um, with Chevis of Chevy Rail Stuff, who that's like my favorite. Like, I have a couple favorite, like, fiber related podcasts, like, since I started knitting, but I love, 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 love Chevis. Like, I feel like we would be best friends, and I really wish I lived near them. Um, her and Dan because they're just amazing and awesome and yeah I want Chevis to be my friend um, <laughs> and I actually bought like that's another acquisition I bought like some Chevy Rail uh, merch I didn't buy a lot of merch but I bought a pin and uh, now I have her mailing address so I have some ideas of because I like literally I, I discovered her blog I watched one episode and was like I love this lady she's amazing and then I watched all of the episodes in like a couple of days like while I was working because uh, I watch TV while I work because it background noise um, <laughs> and I love Chevis and like I feel like I know her a little bit now and I know that's weird with like you know but like when you watch vlogs and you watch them for a little bit even though I watched them all in like one huge span um, 
you feel like you know these people a little and I kind of feel like I know her and like we have a lot of stuff in common like roller derby labyrinth like dogs I'm like she's amazing um but I feel like I know her a little bit and I have some ideas for things that I want to send her um so I'm trying to figure out like I want to send her yarn and I have yarn I can send her but I want to dye something for her uh, I just got to figure out like what colors I want to do. I know she's a fan of yellow, but I know she's also bought a lot of it recently. So like maybe I want to dye something else. I don't know. I want to dye her some yarn. I found like a bag, like I, like watching her blog led me to this bag company and I ended up buying a bag that I think she would like that I want to send her. I'm so weird. Um, like I don't know these people, but I found something I want to send you. Like, I don't know. It's weird, but I want to send her stuff. I went on that whole tangent about Chevis. Okay, so <laughs> because of the underwing mitts, because uh, she, had, like a blog, like way, way, way far episodes back, she had posted that like somebody had given her that pattern and she finally made them not that long ago, like this month or last month. Uh, I can't remember, I watched too much TV. Um, <laughs> and she finally made hers. And then Amy with West 7th Wool posted some that she had made. And I was like, you know, I like it. And then I, you know, they posted the picture of the kit and this bag. And I was like, I need that bag. I will make the mittens because I don't wear mittens. But I'm also looking at the pattern and thinking, you know, these mittens could be socks. So I'm thinking <laughs> of making them socks because mittens. Eh. I don't know. We'll see. I got to look at I've not modified anyone's pattern really before. So I gotta look at the like count and all that and see if I can make it make socks. I don't know. But, okay, so I've chatted so much. Rambling, this is the bag. Isn't it beautiful? Oh, I love the bag. I love the, I love the bag, it's a little drawstring bag. And they have it in this, uh, this purpley color and then they have it in like a blue denim-y kind of color. And it comes with, I have a little thing here. Uh, four ply, non superwash, sustainable merino wool. And you can pick black, brown, or purple as your main color. And the contrast color is white. And then you get two accent colors one orange, one green. And I picked the black, and it's more of like a charcoal y. Or did I pick the brown? No, I picked the black, but it's more of like a charcoal y kind of gray. And this is the white with it. And then this is the green and the orange. Um, I almost picked the purple, but then I was like, this is more me. So, <laughs> And then it comes with a little stitch marker. It's super cute, it's super cute. And like I said, if I might make the mitts, but I feel like I wanna make them in the socks because I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I'll make the mitts. Like, maybe I'll make them and be like, oh, I do like mitts. Kind of like, you know, I do like knitting. Who knew? <laughs> All right, so I got that. And then I went to Juju's. And you guys remember that uh, fiber natural cobblestone yarn I got? And it was like a mixture of like white and like teal. And I was like, you know, I think there's a darker version. They did have it. So I bought it. And I'm going to use this because it's 600, 600 yards, right? I think I said square feet last time. 612 yards. So I think this with the light colored one would make like a really pretty stripey thing of something. Yeah, I feel like it would make a pretty cardigan. I haven't tried cardigans yet. Um, but I was watching Bull and Vine and her uh, Stephen West bubble cardigan and her steaking video and I kind of want to try steaking. Like I know I want to try all these things that like more experienced knitters do so maybe I should calm it down but I could do it. I could do it. <laughs> we'll see. I, I, I might do it. And then and I'm apologizing for the crinkling in advance because I haven't taken these out of the package. They're very crinkly. But uh, Chrysalis Yarns had mini skein sets. This one's Dark Forest. And I apologize for the glare, but look at these colors. 
They had like six of them, but I got these two because they're more me. Um, Cryptid Hunter. I'm trying to hold them so they don't crinkle so much. Those colors. And look at this one, the black and the teal. So I got those. And then I told you guys I was going to try to make the shift or the night shift. I'm not quite sure which I'm going to go for. I kind of want to make the big one, but I don't want to make it a triangle shawl because we've already had that discussion. I want to make like a rectangle shawl and I, don't, I have to look at the pattern to see if that's like a thing I can do. Uh, but Morocco had a new sesame color. So I bought that. I thought it was really pretty. Um, I got that. And then, because <laughs> stuff, I went to Joann's to buy fabric. Because um, I showed you guys that uh, really pretty yarn fabric with the metallics and everything. And I am going to make a bag at some point once I cut fabric straight. Um, but the same place that has that fabric, it's the same designer for that fabric had like another fabric uh, similar to it. Um, I'm skipping ahead. I didn't buy this fabric at Joann's. But anyway, there's a point to this. So that designer of that yarn fabric that I bought, which is if you guys have didn't watch that video or have forgotten what the hell I'm talking about, it's this fabric. Uh, but the designer of this fabric um, had like a, it was part of like a set um, and I wanted to get the, like a fabric lining to it. And I ordered this fabric from Fat Quarter Shop and realized that I'm not sure if I want to use it. So I went to Joann's. That was the whole point. Um, but I did buy fabric at Joann's and bought this. It's like an African print, um, but I just, I really like the flowers of it. And I'm not really an orange person, but I really like these blue flowers and I like the contrast. Um, but then they had this fabric. And I feel like this needs to be a bag. I'm thinking of doing like a reversible tote with both of these or like finding another fabric to go with this. They had a print that goes with this and it was lots of like African ladies with like hair wraps and stuff and one of the hair wraps has the same print in it. But I didn't really like that fabric that much. Um, and I actually might have a fabric that I'll pair with this. But anyway, I bought these to make bags um, at some point. And then while I was at Joann's, and we've had this discussion too, I decided to give Croy socks another chance because <laughs> I like these colors. Rainbows. So I'm going to make socks with this. Um, I'll probably go down a needle size and see if maybe that makes me happier with the end product. And then they had Pima cotton yarn. And I like cotton yarn. I haven't made anything that like... I've made like crochet squares with cotton yarn, but I haven't done anything knit wise with it, but I love these colors. Uh, this one is, it's Lion Brand Pima Cotton Patagonia, but look at the color. And then they had this one. And then I got like a rust color ones because we all know I like rust colored and coppery things. Um, these look good together. They make socks out of cotton, right? But how do I get the elasticity to keep them up? Like, I don't know. I kind of want to make socks. <laughs> Or I guess I can make a rectangular wrap with this yarn, right? Um, it's 157 yards. And I guess medium, is that a DK? I forget. I don't know. But I think it's going to make cool socks. I don't know what I'm going to make with this. But I mean, it's Lion Brand. It wasn't super pricey. I don't feel that guilty about breaking my yarn diet to buy this. Um, okay. 
And then I had the Season of the Witch Advent from Ash and Bumble Yarn. You get 13 minis. Um, these are all my minis. And what I'm going to try and do is post pictures at the end of the video with the little name descriptions because they're super awesome. Um, like this one is like a really pretty foamy green. But the description of it, I'll, I'll just read the one. Uh, Luna Moth is the colorway. And it's got these little descriptions that came with each mini and they're kind of awesome. And so is like the paper that came with a mini. I'll like post it all at the end of the video or I'll try to. Uh, I gotta play around with editing stuff. Um, but Luna Moth, the wings, body, and appendages of this delicate green moth are used in a variety of concoctions, typically as a powdered base. While its name implies an adherence to the moon phases, it retains its potency year round. So all of these have like these little bitty cards with like descriptions like that. And it's super fun and I'm really glad I got this advent. Um, my only thing, like, I'm not a light colored person and it came with some light colors. So I guess I will put these in some stripy socks. But the darker colors, yes. So like these, these I love. Um, but yeah, I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with this. Um, I was thinking, because I have so many minis, so many minis, like, so many. <laughs> and I have a row one membership so I get minis every month and I don't know why like I die on minis I'm getting all these mini sets what am I gonna do with all this yarn <laughs> but now I'm thinking blanket like a mitered blanket or something I don't know because then I was also thinking you know how you have to make swatches like when you like make sweaters and stuff I've been thinking like I should start making them all the same size and saving them and making a blanket out of them at some point. I don't know. Because I mean, I think I might have gone over how I feel about swatches, but that might have been an Instagram video. <laughs> but swatches, I feel like it's uh, like, I know it's a necessary evil. And I say evil because I feel like it's a waste of yarn. <laughs> so if I start saving them for like a blanket project or something, then they're not waste. You know, kind of like crochet squares. You just make a bunch of crochet squares and eventually you put them all together and make a blanket. But these will be knit squares. And it's not like, it's something I have to do right away. I can just save all the swatches, right? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so Fat Quarter Shop online, the fabric I got to go with the yarn fabric. It's this, and it's probably all blown out and trying to some shade. It's like tattoo flash, but with yarn stuff. And that's so me. So I got this to be the lining um, for that. But I'm kind of thinking I might want a dark lining, which is why I went to Joann's. But I don't know. I didn't find anything at Joann's for that, which I probably should have mentioned a little bit ago. But I didn't find anything to be the lining of that bag. So I'm thinking I might go ahead and keep this as the lining. It's so cute. <laughs> And then they had, and this was the last of it, this fabric. And my thing with this fabric is I have a bag with this fabric. But um, when I bought this bag, like I bought it off of Etsy and it's by Area and Bar. Can you see that? Hopefully you can see it. It's supposed to be a fancy camera that can do all the things so hopefully you saw that um, but when I bought it I didn't realize how floppy it was like because the pictures had it like you know standing up all super perfect but it's actually really floppy and I thought about taking it apart and putting in like the batting stuff that I use to make my bags super sturdy um, but I don't want to mess it up because I really like this bag um, so I have fabric and I can make another bag um, and since this was the last of the fabric, they only had like a yard and a quarter left. Um, so I feel like I can make like a decent sized bag and then I'll have like a matching set. I like things that match. Have you noticed? <laughs> and lastly, I got some happy mail. So I got my pin 
from Chevy Rail. Chevy Rail stuff. Grab your drink. I don't really drink that much. Um, I'm more of a cider kind of person, but this is like her thing. Um, so I had to have it. I'm going to put it on my bag that I put my pins on. And then I found, they have a really cute sheet pin at um, Twill and Print. And Twill and Print is the company that made the Progress Keepers that I love. These ones. Um, so they have a really cute sheet pin and then they have like um, like a teacup one that says sip sip knit and I think I'm gonna order that uh, before they sell out because I know that I think they're vending or they sent a bunch of stuff to Rhinebeck and I feel like people are gonna see their stuff and everything's gonna sell out so I need to buy it like today <laughs> and then um, Mr. Solstice box so yeah and uh, I'm going to hide this somewhere <laughs> so I'm not tempted to open it uh, because you're not technically supposed to open it until December 1st. Uh, but she shipped them out early because she was traveling. Um, this is by Explore Knits and Fibers. And I have some of her yarn. I think I showed you guys a picture of. It was the Drift colorway. <sighs> Drift, Don't Be Jelly, and I always forget the other one. Oh my god, I always forget the color of the gray because it goes with a yarn that I wasn't able to get because I got cart snatched. Um, I forget the name of it. It's okay. It's a light gray. I showed it to you. I don't need to show it to you again. Um, <laughs> I forget what it's called. Dang it. Uh, but that's it. That's all I've got. Um, Again, I'm probably not going to do another video for two weeks because I won't have anything to show you. Uh, I don't believe I have anything else coming, yarn-wise. I have ordered some bags. So next video will probably be, be some bags that I bought. I got... Who did I order from? Let me look. Like a quick preview of what I've, I've, I've purchased. I got bags from, it's in here somewhere, my phone is super slow, Naughty Knitting Sacks, I finally bought a bag, um, there were some other bags that were supposed to be here already, but they're not here yet, Lila Styles, I think those are the ones, oh, they're being delivered today, maybe I'll do this video again later on. Maybe I should wait until my mail comes and redo this video. Or maybe I'll just save it for next video. I'll save it for next video because this video is probably already long enough and I always have plenty of acquisitions, which again, I'm gonna try to slow down on. We'll see. Um, and yeah, like I said, I didn't dye any yarn this week. Hopefully I will have yarn dyed to show you. Um, I have ordered some samples of yarn and I ordered some DK minis because I feel like I need to dye some DK minis for like color work. Maybe. I don't know. Or for DK socks because I got on like a DK sock kick like I told you guys and I didn't have any DK minis to play with so I'm gonna get some DK minis. So I ordered that and then I ordered some yarn samples. Um, I haven't ordered more fingering yarn yet. I need to order some DK yarn, like I said last time. I'm just overextended a bit. I need to wait on it. Um, yeah. <laughs> Been a little crazy lately. I need to calm it down. Um, but anyway, hope you're all well. Happy knitting, and I'll see you guys in two weeks. Bye.